there! Today I want to show you one of the coolest multiplication strategies ever. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, you know, multiplication is not cool. Video games are cool. My dog is cool. But multiplication, not so cool. However, after I show you this, you might change your mind. Here goes. Okay, so let's say we have a problem with 25 times 16 to solve. Now, this is actually going to be really simple and there's a few ways to do this, but this way that I'm going to show you today is called doubling and halving. So what we do is we pick one of the factors to double and then we have to split the other factor in half. And I'll show you what that looks like. So for this one, let's double the 25, which means that we have to divide the 16 in half. So double of 25 is 50 and then half of 16 is 8. So this gives us 50 times 8. Now is this easier to solve? Is 50 times 8 easier to solve than 25, six, 25 times 16? I personally think it is. But if it's not easier yet, let's do another step. Let's double the 50. Let's double this again. So 50, the double of 50 is 100. And now we have to divide this side in half. So what's half of 8? that is 4. Now 100 times 4, that's a pretty easy problem to solve, so we know that it's 400. So 400 is the answer to 25 times 16. Alright, let's try another one. We're going to make it harder this time. So if you see a question like 150 times 24, you might think it's way too hard to solve without lining it all up and doing long multiplication. But actually, we can use doubling and halving for this question as well. So we have to choose, first of all, which side we're going to double and which side we're going to divide in half. So I think we should probably double the 150 because that gives us 300, which is a friendly number, right? It's easy to work with. So let's double this side to make 300. And then we'll, that means we have to split the other side in half. So we'll half this one to make 12. Now, is this easier to solve? 300 times 12? It is, but if it's not easy enough yet, we could keep going. So let's double this side again to make 600. And now we divide this one in half to make six. Now we have 600 times six. Again, way easier to solve than that one. Let's go another, let's do another step yet. So we'll double the 600 to make 1,200 and we'll half the six to make three. So again, 1,200 times three is easier to solve than 150 times 24. So this is just one strategy. There are other things that you could do definitely to figure that out, but doubling and halving is one strategy that works for multiplication. So whenever we learn a new strategy, we want to understand why it works. So let's take a look at why doubling and halving works. Here we have an array that shows four rows of three, or four groups of three, and we can write that like I've shown, four times three equals 12. Now what if we take half of those rows and we move them up to double the amount in each row? Now we see that we have two rows of six. Do we still have 12 dots? Yes, we do. They're just arranged a little bit differently. Let's take the number of rows and divide it in half again. So now we have one row, but we have 12 dots. So we doubled the amount in each row, but we halved the number of rows. Now we have one times 12. As you can see, if you look at the first factor, all we've done is we've divided them in half. So half of four was two and half of two was one. And then on the other factor, we doubled. So the double of three is six and the double of six is 12. This is why doubling and halving works. Now doubling and halving works really well for big numbers that are maybe two or three digits, but it can also work just with basic multiplication facts. So suppose we have 12 times five. We know that five would be a good number to double because that would give us a 10. So let's take that 12 and split it in half and that gives us six. Now we'll double that five to make 10, and now we have six times 10, which is easier to solve generally than 12 times five. So this is just another example of where you could use doubling and halving if you don't already know the answer. 
Now there are some times when doubling and halving is not the best strategy in order to solve an equation. And I want you to investigate this further. So I've given you three examples here, 16 times 20, 15 times 25, and 32 times 25. For one of these questions, I don't think that doubling and halving is a real good uh, strategy to choose. And I want you to figure that out for yourself and then figure out why. Why isn't it that good of a strategy to use? So remember that doubling and halving is just one of the tools in your multiplication toolkit. So you have many strategies that you can use to solve a problem and doubling and halving is just one more to add to that. I hope you enjoyed this video and be sure to check back for more very soon.